There are a lot of people out there today that are looking for fast weight loss, and that has found them chasing drugs like Ozempic and Wagovi. But what if I was to tell you that your body can produce GLP-1 naturally and for free? Well, guess what? It can. And in this video, I am going to, first of all, explain what GLP-1 is, and then I'm going to give you five proven ways that you can boost GLP-1 naturally and for free and science-based and without the use of any greasy injections. But before I get down to all that fun stuff, make sure to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide number one. It is a hormone in the body that helps slow digestion, it controls appetite, and it helps regulate the all-important blood sugar. If your blood sugar levels are sporadic and they're up and down all the time, insulin is constantly being produced in the body. When this happens, your body goes into fat storage mode and it becomes very hard to lose weight and even maintain weight. That is the whole idea behind such drugs as Ozempic and Wagovi. They were originally utilized as a diabetes medication, but what ended up happening is people started losing a ton of weight. They started figuring out, oh, this is a good weight loss drug. So now everyone in their sister and brother who wants to lose weight quickly is getting prescribed Wagovi, Ozempic, and all these other similar drugs to help lose weight. I happen to be an all natural guy and I'm a purist as well. And I say, do every single thing humanly possible to lose weight until you have to cross that line and get something like an Ozempic or a Wagovi. And believe you me, there are a lot of things you can do. Why people are paying thousands of dollars for something that the body can do naturally is beyond me. And I'm here to set the record straight. All that being said, let's get down to the five ways that you can boost GLP-1 naturally without having to rely on the pharmaceutical end of things. Number one, include more quality source of protein and dietary fat into your diet. This combination helps naturally raise GLP-1 and it is very satiating too, which means it helps fill you up. If you were to compare this to a carb heavy meal, especially with simple carbs, you're gonna notice a drastic difference in GLP-1 levels. For example, if you had a salmon steak with some avocado and a salad and some Brussels sprouts or broccoli or something like that, you would have a fantastic meal right there that would help with GLP-1. If you had a meal containing mashed potatoes and pasta and bread and all these simple carbs, then you wouldn't get much help when it comes to GLP-1. So you wanna avoid those really carb heavy meals, especially when they have saturated fat and simple carbs combined together. In fact, simple carbs and saturated fat is the real devil out there, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video. A few good sources of protein would be eggs, salmon like I mentioned, chicken breast, lean beef, bison, all forms of fish, all forms of shellfish, and even tofu if you happen to be vegan. And here's a little mini tip for you. When you're eating a meal that has protein, carbohydrates, and fat in it, eat your protein and fats first and your carbs last. Not only does that help with the glycogen spike that you get from a meal, but it also helps with your GLP-1 levels. And if you wanna go one step farther, prepare your carbs today, put them in the fridge, and then eat them cold the next day or reheat them. When you do that, the resistant starch rises, causing less of an effect on blood sugar and a better effect on GLP-1. Such things as potatoes, grains, pasta, that sort of thing is what you wanna think about when it comes to the cooling effect of carbohydrates. And I have a video on that specifically. And I also have a video on fiber maxing and you should check out both of them because they all kind of relate to GLP-1. I just don't mention them in there. The second proven way to boost GLP-1 is through intermittent fasting. And as you know, my channel is called Fasting for Fitness. So I'm all about fasting. In fact, I was featured in the documentary Film Fasting and I highly suggest you watch it if you haven't done so yet. Something as simple as following a 16-8 protocol where you fast for 16 hours a day, eat in an eight hour window, and have two meals, not eat throughout the whole eight hour window, can help boost your GLP-1 levels. Your body becomes more insulin sensitive, you promote more weight loss, your blood sugar stays more optimized, GLP-1 rises, your brain function goes to the roof, the list goes on and on when it comes to the benefits of fasting. But for the sake of GLP-1, what I would suggest you do is fast for 16, 18 hours a day, two meals, no snacks, no sugary beverages, Mainly drink water, tea, and black coffee in between your meals. Sparkling water is fine as well. And then once a month, do a longer extended fast. That's called a periodic fast. I would suggest 48 hours, but if you wanna stretch it to three days or four days or five days, be my guest and do that as well. That's gonna get you really deep into autophagy where your body starts breaking down bad cells. It's really going to help boost GLP-1. It's going to help with brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which helps boost your mood. And if you have a lot of excess weight to lose, you're gonna lose a ton of weight in that time frame. Just know 
that fasting, all forms of it, to me, is a natural miracle drug. And maybe I'm not allowed to say that, but I'm saying it anyway. The third way to improve GLP-1 is through the medium of exercise, but not just any exercise. I would say do strength training for sure and high intensity interval training in the form of cardio. You wanna get your heart rate up. You wanna be huffing and puffing. And one of the best ways to do that is through intense training. When you're doing strength training, lift as heavy as you can, take short rest breaks, and try to target all of your major muscles. I would actually suggest doing compound exercises where you're targeting multiple muscle groups at the same time and multiple joints are being activated. A good example of this would be a barbell clean and press, shoulder presses, back rows, squats, lunges, those type of exercises, deadlifts, anything that incorporates more than one joint and more than one muscle group. They give you a better bang for your buck. And as far as hit goes, cardio, choose any form of cardio you like, start with a five to 10 minute warm up. Hit it as hard as you can for 30 seconds, come down to a, a lower pace for one minute, and then alternate back and forth for 10 to 12 times, finish with about a 10 minute cool down, and then your workout's done. And to supercharge the GLP-1 effect, do all your workouts in a fasted state. Ideally, you finish eating early in the afternoon, like four or 5 p.m., you sleep through the night, you go to the gym first thing in the morning, and you work out at like five or 6 a.m. in the morning after 12 to 14 hours of fasting. Because if you go into a workout in a fasted state, the GLP-1 effect will be higher, you're gonna become fat adapted eventually, so your body's gonna rely on fat for energy throughout the day, and you're gonna be able to effortlessly work out without the feeling of an elephant standing on your chest or getting kicked in the stomach. Ideally, I would say work out every day of the week, but if you can't, try to aim for at least five days. The fourth way you can improve GLP-1 is through the medium of high fiber foods. Now, I am going to rewind and tell you to go check out my fiber maxing video because I talk all about fiber and how much I consume. In the grand scheme of things, we as a nation do not get enough fiber in our diets. That's one of the biggest things and the biggest holes that I see that is not talked about often enough. And a lot of people say, prioritize protein, prioritize protein. I say, moderate protein is fine, and what you should prioritize is fiber. Ideally, aim for 55 to 65 grams a day and try to get it from diversified sources. Whole grains, beans, whole grain products, fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, all these things are good sources of fiber. You increase your fiber intake, it's gonna slow down your blood sugar spikes, and it's gonna ramp up GLP-1. The best thing to do is start out gradually if you don't follow a high fiber diet right now, and then slowly increase it over time. If you go from like 10 grams of fiber a day to 60 grams a day, you're gonna have some problems. You'll have belly aches, you're gonna have bathroom trips, you're gonna probably have bloating and gas and a lot of things you don't want. So wean your way into the fiber, but definitely start taking it. You can also supplement as well. Acacia fiber is really good. Psyllium husk is really good. Ground up flax and chia and hemp are all really good sources. Include those in your meals and then fatten up the meals with fiber as well. Not to mention when you increase your fiber intake and start getting up into the 50 plus range, it populates the good bacteria in your small intestine, thus improving gut health. So it's a win-win situation all around. And you've probably already heard at this point in your life that a higher fiber diet is preventative when it comes to cancer too. And hopefully that won't get my video shadow banned because it is common knowledge and it is across all of the medical industry websites. Number five, we have sleep. Another commonly abused facet of life that we all need to survive, but we often chintz on. Before I get to the nuts and bolts of sleep, I will tell you this much. I hear all this hype about, don't look at your screen at night, don't watch TV, don't look at your phone and all these other things because it'll prevent you from falling asleep and it won't allow you to get good sleep. Well, guess what? It helps me sleep. If I'm on my phone editing videos or doing anything industrious, I start getting drowsy, I start getting tired. I put my phone down, I turn off the light, and I'm out like a light bulb. When I'm watching TV, sometimes I go to bed wide awake, and within five minutes, out like a light. So when I tell people don't always believe the hype and always play the tape to the end, I'm telling you the truth on that one. I don't think all this fear mongering about screens is that big of a deal. But hey, that's just me. I don't know how it works for you. Just know this, if you get quality sleep, it helps GLP-1. When you don't get quality sleep and you sleep sporadically and you go to bed at different hours and different times, the next day it has a negative effect on ghrelin, which is your hunger stimulating hormone. It causes it to go through the roof. You then end up eating more than you normally do or want to and you gain weight and it jacks up GLP-1. Don't let that happen. Actually, I got a better idea. Get closer to the screen. Stop it! Okay, now I got that out of the way. Make sure to get seven to eight hours of sleep every night or at least strive to get that much and try to get to bed at the same time every night and get up at the same time every day. That way your body can get into a rhythm and it won't be all jacked up. And you're gonna be able to regulate GLP-1 levels. And one little bonus tip I'd like to throw out there for you is 
start doing hot yoga. I absolutely love hot yoga. I go with my significant other one to three times per week. Sometimes we do two hot yoga classes in the same morning. And to me, that is an absolute panacea. So many wonderful things happen after hot yoga, it's not even funny. When you expose your body to extreme heat for one thing, it's very beneficial. When you expose your body to extreme heat and you're exercising in that extreme heat, it more than triples the effect. I have it on good authority to believe this helps balance your hormones and helps with GLP-1. Cold exposure is another thing you might wanna experiment with. My skin is pretty sensitive and I'm not big into the cold therapy thing. I make up for it with the heat therapy in hot yoga. But these two forms of hormesis can have a major impact on the body and balancing all the hormones and all the systems in the body. Thus, it can have an ancillary effect to GLP-1. Just throwing it out there, think about it if you want, but don't think you have to do it. All these things I went over are not magic bullets by any stretch of the imagination, but they do make your body work the way it's designed to work. And since I'm an all natural guy, I always go this route any chance I get. And remember, take this all that I said with a grain of salt, do the best you can, put your best foot forward, and if you're like me, and you want to try to avoid the pharmaceutical industry altogether and bypass it, then do what I said. And then when you absolutely have to cross that line, then do it then. But you have the power. You have the control. Take ownership of your health and do the best you can at all hours of the day. In the meantime, make sure to check out my website, which is in the description below. And if you want to do any coaching or training, make sure to hit me up. Lastly, I'd like you to drop a comment. And let me know if you've tried any of these things that I talked about today and how much success you've had with them. And the last, last of them all, make sure to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. Until next time, this is Kevin David Rail reporting live.